What's up everybody? Welcome back to the fourth video in this series on intermittent fasting. And today we're going to be talking about the top five mistakes that I see people make, scratch that, that I made when I started fasting and that I see people make all the time. Now you might think when you look at my before and after pictures that this whole thing just came easily to me and that just because I'm a coach and because I was a coach at the time that I started intermittent fasting that I made zero mistakes and as soon as I started fasting the weight just melted off and life was good, but you'd be very wrong. I made pretty much every mistake that I think there was to make when it came to trying to start intermittent fasting and so what I thought I I would do today is save you guys the pain of making the same mistakes that I did and just lay out the top five mistakes that I see people make, yes, including myself, so that you can know how to avoid them and you can get the absolute best results from fasting as quickly as possible so that you don't have to you know, feel like an idiot like I did. So real quick before we get into these, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button so you get notifications for when I put out the next video in this series. And with that said, let's get into the top five mistakes, starting with number one. Number one is not getting enough water or salt in your diet when you first start fasting. One of the number one complaints that I get from my clients and the, probably the first thing that I experienced when I first started fasting is that I got this midday just slump of energy where I had no energy and sometimes I would get a headache as well. And oftentimes we think, oh, well, I have no energy. I just feel like oh, I got nothing. I'm not eating enough. I need to eat more food. I, I need caffeine. That's not the problem. The reason you're experiencing this energy slump, this raging headache is probably because you're dehydrated and you do not have enough salt and electrolytes in your body to make energy production what it needs to be. So how I combat this, and you actually heard me talk about this little hydration cocktail that I do in one of the previous videos. I'll throw up a, a card here, a link to that, and I'll put a link down in the, in the description as well. So if you wanna go back to the video where I talk about that, you can. But I do a little hydration cocktail with some water and I add a little bit of salt and some flavoring to it. And I use that to make sure that every day when I'm fasting, I have enough water and enough salt so that I feel great. I feel super energetic. I don't have any headaches. I'm less hungry because I have that. And I'm set up for success versus if I wake up and I don't don't get that water in and I'm not getting enough salt, I just feel sluggish, I can't concentrate, I feel way more hungry, my body just feels stressed. So don't make that mistake, make sure you're getting enough water in. So the, the basic recommendation is you need to start with water, start with 32 ounces right out of the gate as soon as you get up, have some coffee after that if you want to or whatever you, your, your jam is, but make sure you start with water and make sure you continue to drink water and get enough salt in throughout your day, okay? so. Number one, make sure you're getting enough water and enough salt so that you feel energetic, you're, you're sharp mentally, and you're not overly hungry. Let's move on to number two. Number two is failure to be prepared during your fasting window and your feeding window. This is probably one of the first mistakes that I see people make is they'll start fasting and they just dive right into it. They're like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, just gonna fast until noon today. And they've never done it before and they have no idea what they're doing. And so they're unprepared. They don't bring their food. They don't have any idea what they're drinking during their fasting window, what they're gonna eat during their feeding window. And they just wing it. And what happens is usually they end up not drinking enough water and electrolytes during their fasting window. They feel like crud. They're starving by the time they get to their feeding window. And because they're not prepared with food or knowing what food they're going to seek out when they end their fasting window and they start their feeding window, they just make a horrible decision and they drive through the drive through at McDonald's or Wendy's or whatever your jam is, or they go to the vending machine down the hall because they feel like they're having a low blood sugar episode and they're just ravenously hungry and they jam on potato chips or a candy bar or something like that. Being unprepared for your fasting window and your feeding window is a recipe for disaster, okay? You're asking for trouble, you're asking for yourself to be put in that situation where you're gonna make a bad decision and it's gonna undo all the benefits that you're trying to get to lose weight and lose body fat with intermittent fasting. So this one is super simple. You just gotta think ahead about what you really want, right? What am I gonna drink during my fasting window? And again, previous video, link down below, you, you'll see what I drink during my fast and you'll have some good examples there and you'll know exactly what I eat during my, my feeding window. Use that example and download the free guide that I've talked about in the last couple of videos because it breaks all that stuff down 
down for you, but you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing, but you need to have a plan so that you're not caught off guard with hunger, you're not caught off guard making bad decisions that are gonna undo all of your hard work, okay? So that's number two, be prepared, don't be unprepared. Don't be, don't be that person, all right? Let's go on to number three. Number three, overcompensating in your feeding window. If you're using intermittent fasting specifically for the goal of weight loss and fat loss, what you're trying to do is to create a calorie deficit with intermittent fasting. So you're skipping breakfast and skipping snacks before lunch or you're skipping dinner, you're skipping meals and snacks somewhere in the day to create a calorie deficit. So it doesn't make sense if you're skipping say breakfast and you're not eating until lunch to then take the calories from breakfast and put them into your feeding window and then eat a gigantor lunch or a gigantor dinner or eat a bunch of snacks between lunch and dinner because you thought, well, I skipped breakfast. I can just eat a little bit more. No, no, no. That's not what we're trying to do here. If you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to burn fat, those meals and snacks that you eliminated need to just stay eliminated. And the meals and the snacks that you have during your feeding window that are left, your lunch, your dinner, your snack, or your breakfast, your lunch, and your snack, those need to just stay the same size they were before. Otherwise, if you're adding calories back into your feeding window, you're not really in a calorie deficit. You can start doing that when you get to the goal weight that you want to be in the goal body composition that you want to be and you feel great, then you can start to take your breakfast and your, your, your meals and your snacks that you eliminated and add those back in to where you have bigger meals and bigger snacks and you can still stay at the same weight and the same body composition. That's what maintaining with intermittent fasting is like and it's amazing, but I see it all the time and I, and I did this. I totally did this when I first started fasting. I skipped breakfast, I skipped snacks, all that stuff, but man, my lunch got bigger, my dinner got bigger. I had more snacks between lunch and dinner. I just, my brain just took over and it just, I just instinct took over and I just started eating more food during my feeding window. And then all of a sudden I'd be like, why am I not losing weight anymore? Well, it's because I'm eating way too much food during my feeding window. So don't make mistake number three, don't overcompensate and add those calories back in. Keep your feeding window exactly like it was before you eliminated those calories and stay in a deficit and you'll keep having great results. Real quick before we get to the last two on this list, let me know, have you guys made any of these mistakes so far? If you have, which ones did you make? How did you feel? And what are you gonna do now that you're aware of them to make sure that you don't make them again? Number four on the list is poor sleep. Now, as a coach, I see sleep as probably the number one thing that can just destroy weight loss results in almost any case, especially though when you are fasting, because when you don't get good sleep, not only do you just feel tired and you feel cruddy, but poor sleep spikes stress hormones sky high and stress hormones also increase hormones like hunger hormones and craving hormones. And when you're trying to skip breakfast or skip a snack and, and, and fast all the way until lunch, when you're not well slept and you're just irritable and you're hungry and you're stressed and you're craving stuff, because you didn't get good sleep, trying to stick to your fast is gonna feel like impossible. And it's, it's just gonna be very hard. And it's gonna make intermittent fasting very hard. And it's gonna make it very likely that you're going to mess up and you're going to overeat during your feeding window or you're gonna break the fast early when you really didn't need to. There's any number of things that could go wrong there, but getting good quality sleep, enough good quality sleep is going to make sure that you wake up rested, you feel good, you're not having these jacked up stress hormones that are making you irritable and craving food and hungry because that's the body's natural physiological response when your stress hormones go up because of a lack of sleep. So make sure you're getting at least seven hours. Seven hours is okay. Eight is great. Some people get nine. Seven to nine is like a great window, right? But six, five, Four, I mean, that's why you feel like crap. And you're, you're gonna find fasting with less than seven hours of sleep on a continuous basis for most people is going to be very difficult. You might be one of those freaks out there who can just like wake up, you know, sunny and ready to go for the day with barely any sleep. But that's not most people. It's definitely not me. It's definitely not my wife. So make sure you're getting enough sleep. That's gonna set you up for success when you're fasting, all right? Number five is gonna be fasting when you're under a lot of stress. Now this could be emotional stress. It 
could be mental stress. If you're under you know, deadlines at work, deadlines at school, maybe you just have a lot going on. You have things going on in your family. You have a family member that's sick or a, or a loved one that's not doing well, or you're experiencing friction in your relationship. There's a, a million and one things that can make us feel stressed emotionally and mentally, but combining fasting with those things can be too much for a lot of people. It's kind of similar to when you try to fast with poor sleep. The stress of having poor sleep combined with the stress of intermittent fasting is not a good combination. So it's the same thing if you're under a ton of stress at work or a ton of stress for this reason or that reason, combining that stress with trying to adhere to intermittent fasting may very well work against you and make you just make your head explode and make you dive off a cliff and binge eat or, 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 or go too far the other direction where now you're not in a calorie deficit and now all you wanna do is eat because you're just emotionally and mentally exhausted and stressed stressed to the max. It's too much, right? So I can't say that this is going to be the, the, the thing for everybody. Some people handle stress differently than others and they can, they can handle deadlines. They can handle a mental and emotional stress and not let it affect their fasting regimen or their diet, but most people can't. And so just be aware. This is just something to be aware of. If you are under a lot of stress and you're trying to throw intermittent fasting into the mix and it's not going well, then maybe you need to wait a little bit until you get through these deadlines or wait until you resolve a few of these other things and put out some of these other fires that are going on in your life. And then intermittent fasting may feel way easier for you. And it may actually be something that can benefit you and that you can get a lot of good results with. But trying to do all these things at once, fasting and deal with all these other fires that are going on in your life might be too much for you. So just be aware of that. You might be a fine and you might be someone who, who just, it doesn't mesh with you, right? Based on where you are right now in your life and everything that you have going on. So guys, that's the five tips, right? Make sure that you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I want to make sure that you get notified of all our future videos. And I really appreciate you guys spending the time to consume this content that we're creating for you. If you haven't already gotten the free downloadable guide for getting started with intermittent fasting, there is a link below in the description and it really breaks down sort of piece by piece, chunk by chunk as we've gone through this series on intermittent fasting on how to get started and not make all these mistakes, right? Uh, it, it's got all this detail broken down for you, written out with what I eat, what I drink, you know, how to get started step by step. Download that guide and jump in. And I hope that you guys learn something from these five mistakes. Maybe you've already made them, maybe you haven't made them, and I hope that's the case. If you haven't made them, now you know how to not make them, and you'll be able to speed up your results even faster by skipping past these mistakes and just getting straight to some really good results with intermittent fasting. That's it for today. I'll see you guys in the next video next week. Take it easy until then. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.